We're Tamara and Corey Zander with the Zander Real Estate Team. And a lot of times people ask us, how did you guys get started in real estate? How did you become a couple brokerage? Um, Corey's the broker, I'm the lead listing agent, but the, the initial beginning of our brokerage, of our real estate career, uh, started in 1991, actually. We'd just recently gotten married and we were students um, down in Provo, and we are all about being efficient and, and investments. So we bought a dumpy little duplex. It was pretty scary. Yeah. What year was it built? It was built in 1932. Yeah, crazy. So we bought this little 1932 side-by-side -side duplex. It was pretty run down. We bought it for $63,000. $63,000. You can't get a garage for $63,000 now. Anyway, so in 1991, we found this little side-by-side -side dumpy duplex and we thought, hey, let's buy this. We'll live on one side. We'll rent out the other side and our renters will cover our mortgage. And it worked. Mm -hmm. But when we moved in, we discovered the place was a dump. Carpet was torn up. There was crumbling carpet pad. There was yucky things on the wall. We painted, we carpeted, we worked our tails off and we fixed that up. We still have that duplex. We could have used a real tour. We did it ourselves, but we learned a lot of things. So from those initial beginnings of buying our first rental property in Provo, Utah, we've bought several other rental properties, uh, investment properties, but from there, Go ahead and tell your part of it, Corey. What did you do? Well, um, we were going through life and I decided to go back to school and get my MBA. Yep. And upon completion of my MBA, I went to work for a big company called Kennecott Land. Yeah. Now, if you don't know about Kennecott Land, they were the development company that developed Daybreak. Right. And so I worked there and shortly thereafter, we moved here to Daybreak. Yeah. You um, were on that initial leadership team. I was on that initial leadership team and I helped to bring on board all of the builders that were here in Daybreak at the time. I went out and I evaluated them and I recruited them to participate in building homes in Daybreak. Right. And that was our first foray into Daybreak and boy, it has been 17 years that we've been here and we love it here. Right. I remember when Corey first started working for Kennecott Land and they had this dream of this this development. They didn't even have a name yet. In fact, we heard some of the initial names that they came up with and Daybreak's the best one. But we heard about this, this dream, this development, and it was unlike anything else in the state of Utah. And now here we are 17 years later and everybody goes, oh, well, it's a winner. Well, back then it was still an idea. And Corey was part of that team and he doesn't brag enough, but it was quite incredible that he was part of that initial team that developed, designed, and, and helped Daybreak come to fruition. That initial grand opening, you were kind of a big part of that, right? I was over the initial grand opening, a lot of it, and it was pretty exciting. It was a new um, development and a new concept for Utah. Yeah. And so it was really exciting. We had, uh, uh, it was sort of like a party too. Yeah, it was kind there of like going to Disneyland. There were hundreds and, and, and actually thousands of people that came yeah. through at that initial grand opening. Yeah. Part of what I did at Kennecott Land was to evaluate all of the master plan communities here in Utah and actually throughout the United States. And then I went evaluated them and looked at, hey, what kind of product can we put here in Daybreak? And so there's a lot of new, innovative kind of homes that we may not have seen previously. Um, and a lot of it was from that research. That and I there's did nothing that. like Daybreak in Utah. No, there's nothing like Daybreak here in Utah. After I worked for Daybreak for a while, then later I migrated and uh, we were flipping homes. So yeah, we had an investor approach us and he said, hey, I've got money, you guys have got smarts, you're realtors, Corey's handy. Let's start flipping some homes. And this was during the big recession that we hit. Yeah, so in 2007, when the, the housing market, it sort of collapsed. Mm -hmm. You know, things changed dramatically. You'll remember that. Yeah. And well, it was that time that I made the transition out of Kennecott Land. Mm -hmm. And just a few years after that, um, I was approached by an investor saying, hey, you know, you know a lot of construction and you know a lot of contractors. Um, let's, let's sort of do business together where you're purchasing and then renovating homes and reselling them. It was a funny initial engagement. Corey was doing the research and doing the analytics. We were sitting at home. Um, I remember it very clearly. Corey was going through the business model and the, and the numbers. And he said, you know, when we buy these homes to flip them, we're going to pay a realtor. And he was factoring in the commissions. And I said, I can be a realtor. And Corey said, you could be a realtor. And I said, well, yeah, could I be a realtor? And I started thinking about it. Well, maybe I should be a realtor. And so we had that idea that I got my license solely to sell Corey's homes, that he would buy a distressed property, he would renovate it with his crew, and then we would sell it. So flipping is what people call it. 
but he, he would put weeks, months worth of work into each of these homes. Tons of homework research went into choosing the home and then lots of work renovating the home. And then I got the easy job on the backside, I got to sell his homes. So I became expert at staging, pricing, marketing, and we had a great business model. Yeah, it was working it actually, really well. It actually went really well. How many homes did we flip? Oh, we did in less than a year, we did about 12. Yeah, and so kind of incredible. Yeah, that was a fun time. But well, from that, Tamara says she was gonna sell just the homes that I was renovating. Well, it didn't turn out that way. No. She couldn't contain herself and she just started um, helping many, many other people sell their homes. That's true. And so after it was flourishing, I decided, hey, well, let's join together because I do really well on the analytical side and the research side. Mm -hmm. And Tamara does fantastic um, in front of people and in talking to them. I mean, she can sell an ice cube to the Eskimos. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, so that's how we did it is we, we put ourselves together as a team. Um, definitely we have our strengths and definitely Corey's the analytics and the detail and the data and the numbers. And I enjoy presenting to people. So he'd spend, you know, two hours putting together an incredible market analysis on a home. He'd tell it to me in a number 10, 15 minutes and I'd go present to the client. And it was a great uh, combination of our talents and our opportunity to go help people. And it just, it did, it flourished, it grew. Before we knew it, we had more business than we could handle, the two of us. So that's when we came up with the concept of the Xander team. Initially, it was just Tamara and Corey Xander doing some deals. And pretty soon we had more business than we could maintain. So we hired a first transaction coordinator. Yeah. We hired a buyer specialist. And then we just kind of had some people approaching us saying, I want to work on your team. And that's how we became the Xander team. Um, another funny thing is people ask me all the time, how did you come up with the green? What's, what's, the, what's the story behind the green and the logo? That's funny you would actually bring this up because there's sometimes a little bit of conflict on how that actually came we, about. We have different memories. <laughs> so I just remembered um, when I was in my MBA class, they said the most distinguishable color that exists for people when they see it in marketing is that sort of yellow fluorescent green that you see on workers' jackets. And that like, was the one that stuck out most to anybody out of any like, color. Like the construction guy that you don't want to hit on the road. They put him in fluorescent right. green. So we're not quite that fluorescent. Yeah, we're not quite that fluorescent. But then I thought, oh, I love the color of the uniforms of the Seattle Seahawks. That's and true. And that green that came yep, out. Yep. I said, that's the color we need. So when we first started our team, we were just husband-wife team. And then I think, Corey, you had the vision of let's get a logo. Let's get some, some marketing pieces that actually really look good. So we hired a marketing firm, which was outside of my comfort zone. I thought, well, we can't afford that. But we went and found a really good marketing firm here in the Salt Lake Valley, and they came up with some logos for us. And if you've seen our logo, it's that cool Xander pin drop, the pin drop with the Z inside. And they gave us a red one, a blue one, and a green one. Do you remember that? Right. And they told us, oh, just interchange the colors. Just use them all. And we're like, that doesn't make any sense. Right. So we both honed in on the green. We loved it. And we, we tweaked the green to where it's just the perfect color now. And now we have a specific Xander green color. We call it Xander green and a lot of our clients call it Xander green yeah. too. Yeah, we're waiting, just wait. We're waiting for Crayola to put a Crayola crayon that is <laughs> Xander, Xander green. green in the crayon box. But anyway, so that's kind of some of the initial beginnings of our business. Quite unique. Yeah. Um, we were brave enough to be independent. We, mm -hmm. we never relied on what some of those big nationwide brokerages that people plug into thinking that that's safe. And actually, you don't get the support, nor the care, nor the human interaction like we do in our Xander team. So we are an independent brokerage. Yeah, we started in 2011 with our first home. And then we've just grown since then. We became our own independent brokerage. 2011 was our first transaction. 2017, we, we became, became our became, own brokerage. Yeah. And now we've grown, grown to a team of 18 of us team members, and we continually keep growing. Yeah. Our goal this year is to add some incredible, talented people that are growth-minded and have a desire to join us and take great care of our clients. Some of the things that's important to us as the Xander team is not only do we want to be professional and expert at, at protecting our clients, that's so important. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's people that just do real estate, but we really want to take care of our people. I always tell people, I want to take care of you the way I would want to be taken care of if you were selling my house or helping me buy a house. So we really take that seriously. We want to care for our clients, but we also want to have a great time doing it. 
And we want our clients to be continual raving fans. We want you to have a continued relationship with us and, um, and come to our events, come to our parties, parties and, and be part of the Xander team. Part of the Xander family. Yeah. We really feel that it's important for everyone that's on our team that they're expert at what they do. Mm -hmm. It's not okay for us for somebody to come and sort of do things half-heartedly, part-time. Mm -hmm. um, everyone here is full-time. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of training and teaching and coaching to make sure that everybody has the skills that are necessary. Yeah. And not only do we provide that, but we also ourselves receive training and coaching from outside yeah. resources to make sure that not only here locally are we the best, but also nationally we receive that similar type of coaching. Right. We spend thousands of dollars a month on coaching and coaching for us and coaching for our team. So when you plug into the Xander team, uh, you get to be a part of that. As we've built this Xander team together and we've kind of shared with you our story today, it's important to us that our clients feel taken care of. And we also love it when our clients actually feel like part of the family. Absolutely. We want all of our clients to be so happy with us that they want to share us with other people. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where it's really fulfilling because we have so many people that have shared their experiences with their friends and then we've been able to be friends with them also. Right. Highest compliment is when uh, past clients will send their, their kids, their friends, their neighbors. Just yesterday, uh, one of my clients from a few years back sent their daughter and their new son-in-law to us. They said, you've got to call Tamara and the Xander team. And one of our buyer agents sat and did a buyer consultation with them. That's how we uh, feel fulfilled, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Is helping you. We want you to feel like you're doing your friends and family a huge favor by referring them to the Xander team that you feel like you're giving them this great opportunity to work with a team of professionals and experts that truly care about you. And we truly do. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're considering at all that you may be selling your house or you need to buy a house in the next while, we would hope that you would consider, you know, interviewing us, interview the Xander team and see how we do things different than others. Right. Give us a call. We'd love to present to you our, our value, our process, how we take care of our clients. And, and how we care for you and your bottom line. Um, thanks so much for listening in today, listening to our story of how we became the Xander team. And we look forward to meeting you. And we look forward to having ongoing relationships with our clients. We truly care about them. And we, uh, we love uh, engaging with our clients and having client events and, and ongoing relationships. So thanks so much for your time. Loved having you listen in with us today. And have a great day. See ya, have a great day. Call below. Mm -hmm.